So um, here we are. Um, Hum, that, that's good feedback. I, I know that eight videos a week is probably a little more than what you want to watch. But yeah. uh, like I mentioned, this class is fashioned after a three credit hour course. Um, mm -hmm. And when we teach a three credit hour course over the summer, we teach five hours per week. And I previously taught this as two and a half hours of content, two and a half hours of practice. Right? So if you look at week two's videos, we have two and a half hours of content. Um, and and uh, that I've tried to split that up into smaller videos, but some concepts are just too long to be explained in a five to 15 minute. Yeah, I see, yeah. It's okay, yeah. But it's very useful. I, I really like that. Okay, yeah, what's, you important is, what's important to me is that at least the concepts are clear, and especially mm -hmm. with fast date, I think it's one of those things that can be easily be confusing. So as long as you understand it well, I, I will say that our goal is being met, even though it may not be ideal video length. Yeah, because I used to work it uh, with the uh, data analysis, so I think it's very helpful for me. It's really good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'd like to hear that. Uh, any other feedback from anyone else watching the videos? I appreciate that you broke the videos uh, in parts. So we can just review the part that we are not really getting easily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I got that same feedback from one other person that's not on the call right now. Um, instead of doing one two and a half hour video, which I think can be really long and painful to watch, uh, I'm doing a bunch of videos, which also is easier for me to make because I don't have to teach everything um, at once. But uh, I do know that we'll have many videos when we do it this way. Yes. All right, we've got a few more people joining in. So if you all have any feedback about the videos, about the content, uh, let me know. I have not uh, prepared week three's videos yet, but I should have them ready by Monday. And I will send out an email just like I did last week saying that the videos are ready. Um, if you have any more feedback, let me know. Otherwise, we can also talk about your homeworks. Um, how many people here successfully completed your homework this week? Don't tell me that. Yeah. Okay, I see three, four, five. All right. Matthew, you as well. All right. Okay. Uh, so it looks like, looks like homework is a pretty good success this week, uh, which I'm hoping it will be because um, the, the homework was not very challenging. I think my goal was to get you guys used to writing programs. Um, so some of the things I, I uh, requested that you complete as part of the homework should have been straightforward. Now, it's always possible that you ran into errors with respect to syntax, with respect to missing semicolons and some other stuff. But hopefully by now, all of those things are, are getting smoothed out, right? Uh, starting next week, we will move into slightly more um, advanced processes within SAS. So next week, we are going to learn about loops. We are going to learn about transposing data sets. And we are going to learn about um, first dot and last dot variables, which we'll talk more about next week. So uh, the homework will begin picking up from next week, right? Uh, for this week, I, I'm glad that you all got there. Uh, if you had any specific questions for homework, please interrupt me and ask. But what I want to do now is I want to cover uh, a couple of questions that I had I received during the week. Uh, the first one was that somebody asked me to apologize because I classified uh, bug type Pokemons as grass type. And for that, I am sincerely sorry. I, I know bug Pokemons are bug Pokemons. But I think as part of uh, trying to demonstrate something for this class, I may have misclassified them. <laughs> Uh, I will go uh, going forward. I will try and be better about my Pokemon classifications. Um, yeah, I can see already. I'm getting appreciation for that. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, on a more serious note, the one question I received from Shashir uh, earlier today was about uh, select when and if then statements. And Shashir said, when do you use one versus the other? And that's a really good question. Uh, there is not a straightforward, easy answer to that. I will tell you that as a rule of thumb, I prefer using if then statements over select when, just because if then statements are easier to read, they're easier to debug, and they're um, 
simpler to understand if you were right so if you are reading somebody else's code it's easier to understand their code if they used if then statements when compared to select when statements and but that's just a personal thing right that maybe for somebody else select when statements are easier to understand i just think if then statements are easier to understand because they sound like regular english having said that if then and select when statements are pretty much the same right they they do the same thing and uh, they actually even take similar amount of time to process when you are working on sas in huge data sets which have millions of rows sometimes one important consideration is how much time does it take to compile this syntax versus this other syntax but in reality an if then statement and a select when statement take the same amount of time to compile provided you only have one if then statement right so if you write a select one statement which includes like the, like that example that we discussed during the videos this week uh, that is equal to one process in sas but if you write it in an if then statement you might you will probably have to write three or four if then statements to do the same processing so if that happens then you are taking more processing time to write the if then statement compared to select when but if you are using a small data set and when i say small i'm saying anything under a million or 5 million rows even with 5 million rows sometimes if you have a big enough processor things should go quickly but if you are definitely if you are under 100000 rows then it really does not matter for processing power if you are using if then or select when in which case i would prefer if then statements just because syntactically they are easier to understand but you guys decide which one you are more comfortable using the other major advantage between an if then and a select when statement is that an if then statement can incorporate boolean logic so if you have multiple conditions if you have an and an or or an and not and other conditions that you want to incorporate within your condition then if then statements are better at doing that because select one statements cannot accommodate all of those things really well so ultimately which one you choose depends on the situation and depends on your personal preferences and of course depends on uh, processing power uh, implications if you are dealing with large data sets but as a broad rule of thumb you can use any which one you want and it should not make a difference Shashir, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, any other questions about the content from week two or about the homework? I have a question about if then statement. Okay. So when you do an if then statement, you are basically creating a new variable. Uh, can you do if then statement on an existing variable and just tell says to replace the value? Absolutely. Yeah, that is a good question and yeah you can do that so if you have let's say an existing variable where some values are missing and some values are equal to a certain value and you want to replace the missing value with with a certain number let's say you want to replace the missing value with the number 9 for some reason and 9 is popularly used in some survey softwares like spss to do that um, you can use uh, that statement at the end of that if then clause with an existing variable and it will replace those values for you so so that's one thing to be cautious about as well because if you are using an if then statement with an existing value know that the values will be replaced and you won't have a previous version available unless you go back to the earlier data set okay thank you dr chang um, any other questions one thing about if then statements we did not cover is uh, how do you implement more than one statement depending on one condition right so the example that we covered is a classic if then example where you have one condition and after the then statement you follow with one statement so if condition then one statement but what if you had three or five statements based on one condition well you can write three to five if then statements but there are ways to make that more efficient and we'll talk about those things next week as well okay All right. Having said that, if I don't hear any questions about uh, any of the content, any more of the content, or if I don't hear any questions about the homework, I'm going to go ahead and start doing the homework right now. On on the video, I'll share my screen, and we'll talk about the homework uh, because this is a fairly simple homework. I think we should be done pretty early. Uh, but if you all have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. Yeah, please feel free to interrupt, and, and I can answer any questions along the way as well. Um, 
just to recollect before I start doing this. So for this week's homework, you were supposed to use this data set called week two underscore HW. Uh, and it had many, many variables in there, but the only variables we were concerned with was female, age, um, and then ADHD. Those are the only three variables we were concerned with. The first bullet point within, um, before I say that, uh, as soon as I start writing my program, I'm going to write a lib name statement for the class lib name, just as I usually do. Let me execute this. Signed it successfully. I'm also going to write a header for my program. So right now I'm going to jump straight into doing the homework, right? Uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to use that data set that I just opened, which is week two underscore AHW in the class statement and create a new data set out of it. So data, I'm going to call this data set um, HW2. Uh, I'm going to save it in my work library because I don't really need to save this one in a permanent data set. Uh, for now, I think at the end of the program, we'll see that that needs to be done as well. For now, I'm just going to save it in a work library. Set class dot. So just while you're doing that, can I ask a quick, if, for it to go into the work, you didn't have to put work, did you? Did what? Did it automatically just go into work if you didn't assign it? Yeah, that is correct. If I did not, um, if I did not say work, it would have automatically gone in there anyway. So writing that work statement, work word there is basically just good practices so that the people that are reading your code can explicitly understand that you are saving it in work, but you don't have to say it. Okay, so the first thing that the homework says is that you need to subset your data set so that the output data set only contains rows that meet the following criteria, which is that it should have adults between the ages of 18 and 21. Now we know that age of the individual is in a variable called age, and it is a numeric variable. So I'm going to write an if then statement. So I'm going to say, if age is um, greater than 18, sorry, and age is less than 21. I use the and statement there because both criteria have to be met, right? I need individuals to be both greater than 18 and they need to be less than 21. If I use the or statement, I might end up with uh, people that I don't want in my data set. So you want to use the right Boolean operator when you do this. And whenever you are writing multiple conditions, another really good practice is to use parentheses. Just like that. So that you can be clear that these are the two conditions and they are being connected by the AND operator. And then you have your then statement. And at this point, I can just say, so I could have done a few things here, right? So if I want to delete everybody that does not meet these criteria, I could have just used the semicolon. And if I do that, what that will show is that only the rows that meet those two criteria will be added to the output data set. But I don't like leaving things like this because that's not very explicit, right? You are implicitly suggesting that if the conditions are met, then hold on to the row. But in programming, always be explicit as much as possible so there is no confusion as to what your code is doing. So I'm going to write then output. It should be the same thing, it's just being more explicit. I'm also going to add a comment explaining what I'm doing. There you go. So that's the first, first requirement in that homework. The second one is that the new data set should contain a flag variable. You can give that variable any name you want that identifies female children with ADHD. Now, If you want to identify a flag variable, the way to do that is to say if conditions, and then you add a then variable and then a flag statement. So let me do this. If female equals one and ADHD equals one. So the female equals one is basically female is a variable where if, if the value one is present, the individual is female. So we are adding that in a, in a condition. And the other one is the variable ADHD. If that variable equals one, that means people have ADHD. The, rest, the individual in that row has ADHD. Then uh, I'm going to call my new variable just flag. 
I can call it anywhere, anything I want, but I'm just going to call it a flag variable. Uh, and what I'm saying here is that if those two conditions are met, then flag equals one. As I'm reading through the homework, I actually do see that I made an error in how I've described this bullet point. I said identifies female children with ADHD, but the previous statement actually asked you to hold on to only adults. So I hope that did not trip you up while you were doing the homework. Um, So uh, I, I would just re remove the children word from that uh, homework so that you don't um, have to add that condition into the if then statement. Having done this, now this if then statement basically creates that flag variable. Right? It sets the flag variable to one, where female equals one and ADHD equals one. And when those conditions are not met, the flag variable will be just missing, right? Because I haven't told SAS what to do when those two conditions are not met for my flag variable. But there are a couple of ways to fix that problem. The first thing I can do is I can, before I write my if then statement, I can set my flag to zero for everyone. And then I can replace that zero with the one when these two conditions are met. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to add an else statement right here, which says when the conditions are met, then flag equals one, else flag equals zero. Both of these things will accomplish the same exact output. The difference may be in processing power, however. Because if you write flag equals zero up, up here, what SAS needs to do is it needs to run that one, seven, one sentence for every single row in your data set. Right? It needs to set that row to zero for every single individual. And then it needs to check this condition and replace it with, with once. But instead, if you use that else option, what it will do is it will actually only implement this part of the code for rows where these conditions were not met. So when I use the else statement, I'm saving a little bit of processing power. And I will promise you that if I run this right now with the else option or the flag equals zero option earlier, it's not gonna make a difference to us, maybe a difference of 0.01 seconds. But if you are using a data set that is several gigabytes in size with millions of rows, it might make a difference of a few minutes there. Uh, depending on the processing power of the computer you're working on, of course. Did somebody have a question here? I thought I heard somebody have a question. If not, I will move on. Sorry, that was my son came in the room and I didn't realize that I wasn't on mute. Oh, that's okay. So that's the second bullet point. We created a flag variable, and now that flag variable is one for females that have ADHD, and the flag variable is zero for everybody else, irrespective of their gender or of their ADHD. Uh, all right, the last thing that you need to do for this homework is that the only data sets, the only columns in the final data set should be age, female, ADHD, and the new flag variable. So I'm going to use a keep statement to do that. I'm going to keep the female variable, ADHD variable, age and flag, which is the new variable I just created. All other variables I can delete and I don't really care for, care for them, right? When you close it out with a run statement, before I run this, I do wanna save my data set to a permanent library. So I'm gonna change this to my lib, but I can't just do this because I actually don't have a lib name statement for my lib. So let me go ahead and create that lib name statement first. Um, So I'm using that new folder that I had created last week for the mylib option. Run this first. Okay, it was successfully assigned. Um, okay, so now this data set should, be, this data step should basically do all of the things that were required of you in the homework within one data step. You could have used multiple data steps where you do the first comment, this first uh, statement here can be in one data step. The second statement can be in one data step. The keep statement can be in another data step. If you do that, you are just creating several data sets, all of which takes up memory in the work library. Um, so I like to prefer being more efficient with how many data steps I write, but that really comes down to you and how much memory you have on your computer and how you like to work, right? Some people I know prefer 
writing only one statement per data step so that after they write it, they can open the data set, look at it, make sure it looks okay before they move on to the next step. And that's a good way, especially if you're a beginner and if you're just beginning to start working in SAS, it's a good way to do that step by step so that you can see visually what the output looks like and if it is working well. But as you begin to get used to SAS, you should aim to be more efficient with, with the number of data sets you write. For those of you that are going to be working in pharmacy administration with any of the administrative claims data sets, I will say that you definitely want to be more efficient because we work with data sets that have millions and millions of rows of data. And if you are writing five different data steps instead of one, then you're creating five copies of that file, which means the space we have on our server will run out. Uh, so you do want to try to be more efficient as far as possible. All right, let me check my log. Log looks good, no warnings, no errors. So I'm gonna move on to my output data. So we went to 204 rows and you, you will notice that the earlier data set had 1022 rows. So we deleted a bunch of rows and um, all of the rows that are retained must be individuals between days of 18 and 21. We can check that right here. I see 18.5, 20.3. I don't see anybody in this data set that's not in between those two ages, which means this first statement, that worked well, right? And then next, let's look for the flag variable. I wanna make sure that worked well as well. Okay, here's my flag. The flag variable is missing. That's interesting for everyone. Okay. Um, see, so, so this is the problem with live programming. You will see that I will make mistakes as well when I write my programs. And let's see if we can figure out what's happening here. Okay, so I understand what, what's happening. So what's going on is that this is gonna be a little complicated to explain. So when I write this piece of code like this, what I've done is I've written the output statement right here and I'm not creating my flag variable until after my output statement, right? So what that does is SAS, as soon as it sees the output statement, goes ahead and adds that row to the final data set before this variable was created, right? So if I move the order of these variables, if I cut this and paste it here, that should fix our problem. Let's see if that works. It's possible I'm wrong with my theory. Log looks good. Log looked good even last time because there was not a syntax error. There was just an error with how I ordered my data sets. So there you go, this worked. Does that, does that make sense? I guess I did, while I did not intend to be teaching about order of uh, statements within a data step, um, here we have an opportunity to do so. So what happened is now the flag variable worked and flag equals one where ADHD equals one and female equals one. So females with ADHD, it is one. And this zero, for example, this is not female, not ADHD. So that's correct. This one is not female, but they have ADHD. Still the conditions are not met. So flag equals zero. In this case, female equals one, ADHD equals one. So what this should tell you is that the order of the statements you write within a data set are important. When you write that output command, what SAS is reading there is it is saying, as soon as I read that output, I am ready to create my new row in the new data set. So that row is being added to the new data set irrespective of what statements are written after it. Right? And clearly the keep commands are an exception to that because in the keep command, you're not creating any new variables. You're just deciding which variables to hold on to and which variables you don't want to hold on to. So when you're using the output statement, uh, make sure it is at the bottom of your code. Now, let me show you guys one more example. So what would happen if we were to take out that output, leave the output as implicit, right? Without explicitly mentioning it. Um, and if I were to cut this and paste this earlier, do you think this error will happen again? Do you think we'll have missing values for flag? Any guesses? Not hearing it. Does anybody want to guess if we'll have missing values or not when we do this? Not. <laughs> okay. You are right. Because, because what we are saying is that here, we, do, we did the same exact thing as last time, right? We still have 204 rows, four columns, all the code work, there is no error in the log. But the difference between this and writing the then output is that when you write that output command, SAS interprets it and takes a different action. Right? And, and at that point, SAS is basically creating a data set already. 
if I did not have the then output, SAS is basically just deleting the rows that don't meet these criteria and it's moving on to the next statement within the syntax and it is implementing that. So, so you can use the output option to be explicit. Just be sure that when you use the output option, you don't have any SAS code uh, that is written after it that you need to be implemented. I hope that made sense. Please let me know if I need to repeat that. I'm going to paste it this way and I'm going to run it one more time. I always like double and triple checking my results. So I'm actually going to go to the my lib library now and make sure this data set is here. There you go, there's 204 rows, five, four columns, and the flag variable, it looks good. That concludes our homework. So this should be a pretty short homework this week. Um, and if you all don't have any more questions, I, I think we can go ahead and call it a day. I've got one quickly. Okay, Eric. Well, it's more a kind of a, com a comment the way I, I did something. Uh, when I did the age part, <laughs> Okay. So I said, well, I kind of went at it backwards than what you did. First off, I said, if age is less than 18 or age greater than, so I kind of flipped it, which worked, but I went to 22 because I wanted to capture everybody that was 21.2, 21.3, because I'm working with age stuff. I knew that if I'm 21 and a half, I'm still going to be 21. And so I, I did 22. So, so what you are thinking through, Eric, I, I love that. So number one, you used a different syntax to get to the same output, which is perfectly okay. There are a million ways to do every single thing in SAS. And no matter what route you choose, as long as you reach the end point, I think we're all fine. To answer that second question, I think what you have displayed is, is, is critical thinking with programming beyond just what you normally have to do. I did not expect you to think through any of those things as part of this homework. But if you're working on a real project, you have to think about those things, right? In my homework, I just said adults between the ages of 18 and 21. I did not say anything about 21 and a half, 18 and a half, 17 and a half. I didn't mention any of those things. If you are working on a real project, you probably do have to think about those things. So what I've done here with my age less than equal to 21 command is I've just said, if somebody is exactly 21 years of age, which is if today was their birthday and they turned 21 today, they are retained in the output, but if somebody's 21st birthday was yesterday, they get deleted. If you want to avoid that, you can always make this age less than 22. And now you have everybody in the 21 age group up until the age of 22 in the data set. Um, this is basically, uh, when, when you are thinking about this, Eric, what you're saying is, I'm going to look through my data set and I'm going to actually decide how I want my data set to look like. And what are the different scenarios or the different rows and how will my code affect each row differently? And usually when you're writing code, that level of thinking is essential before you can be a good program. I did not require any of that thinking for this process, but those are really, really good points. Um, as far as the other one that you mentioned, Eric, uh, I think that's also a really good point. There are other ways to write this command. Right? I could have said if age is less than 18 or age is greater than or equals 21 or uh, 22, let's do that, then delete. But I could have used this command instead of the previous one that I just commented out and it will give me the same exact answer. Uh, now in this command, we are basically doing the opposite of it. So instead of age greater than 18, I said less than, this was greater than or equal to, so this is less than. And instead of my AND operator, I wrote my OR operator. The reason I have an OR operator here is because if either of those conditions are met, excuse me, I have a misplaced parenthesis. If either of these conditions are met, then the row gets deleted. So if somebody is less than 18, or if somebody is greater than or equal to 22, they get deleted. Either of those should give you the same exact output. Now, the one difference here is, if I write it this way, so less than equal to 21 or greater than 21 should give me the same output. If I wanted to think like Eric did here, then I can say greater than or equal to 22 in order to be more thorough with who I want to retain and who I don't want to retain in my data set. That is an option as well. Uh, and here we are using a delete command instead of an output command, but really the output should be the exact same thing between those two things. Thank you, Eric. Those are good points.
Anything else? Um, if you all did your homework, uh, did you, if you all did it differently than what I have done it here, please feel free to share it. Uh, I would like to hear what are the other ways you've gone about approaching this homework problem as opposed to what I'm showing here. Because we have a little bit of time, would anyone like to share how they approach this homework? This is not really about the homework, but um, in the uh, when when you have a double quote versus single quote, there is there no difference in the um, non numeric data. Uh, so the single quotes and double quotes work exactly the same in SAS. The only exception to that rule is if whatever you are placing within quotes has quotes itself, right? So let's say. Uh, I am writing the name of an individual, and this uh, this was an example that actually happened to me. We were dealing with county names in the state in the state of Mississippi, and there is one county in Mississippi which actually has an apostrophe within the name of that county. Uh, so if that happens, because there was an apostrophe within the name of the county, we had to use double quotes as opposed to single quotes to avoid confusion. But that is the only rare exception where single and double quotes matter. As long as there are no quotes within that string, then it really should not make a difference. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. So, so I think we can go ahead and call it a day. Uh, please continue watching these videos. Please share your feedback with me. Um, Hong mentioned earlier that some of the videos might have been long. If, if that is a concern, please let me know. I can try and work on keeping the, each video shorter as well. Uh, any other feedback in terms of the materials I'm sharing or the box folder, uh, you are welcome to help me learn more things as well because I have not done this video format for a class ever before. This is my first time. So your feedback can help make this a better course. Hey, Sujit, I've got one quick question that had to do with something we did in the exercise, not the, that you did on the video exercise. Okay. And it had to do with the A, um, calculating an age. Okay. And I was trying to use, I think one of the functions that you had talked about when we were doing age on the, I guess in one of the videos, the, I thought you said INT, but it was similar to the round function. I could get the round function to work, and that's what I wound up using, but I really wanted to use this other function because I had a note that you said no rounding up on that one. And But I, I maybe I misinterpreted, but I couldn't get that function to run right when I was trying to do it. So uh, that's a good point. So uh, when you're calculating age, and this goes back to the earlier comment you made, Eric, right? Somebody that is 17 and a half years old is still 17, they're not 18, right? Um, right. So uh, this, I'm, I'm currently showing the exercise code right here on my screen. This YRDIF function will produce something with decimal places, right? So if somebody is half, is uh, 17 years and half, then this, now, this function will give you 17.5. And at that point, you need to decide if you want that to be interpreted as 17 or as 18. The round function, if you use that, will actually round people up Right? So 17 and a half is interpreted as 18, not as 17. But if you don't want to do that, you can use the INT function, which this should, this should be all you need to do to write that INT function. Is this what you tried, Eric? So I thought I did, and it may have been that you added an, I don't know, I may not have added that extra quote at the end, I could pull up and show you how I got the round to work, but I couldn't get the INT to do the exact same thing except for placing round with INT to work. <laughs> let, let me run this. Um, okay. I'm just going to run these four lines of code. I'm going to ignore all the code that comes okay. after. Uh, and the only things in the data set should be DOB and age, so we can look at it and uh, immediately tell what's happening. So somebody born in 2004 uh, is 16. Wait, let me let me do this. 
Oh yeah, and I put a one between those two parentheses to give me one. Would to do? I did comma one. Would that? Uh, in the in the int function. Like at the end, go past your actual. Yeah, I don't think you need to do that. Okay. So here is that what you're saying? No, on the other side of it, like I. Right there. Yeah, I did that, and I got the round function to work when I did it exactly like that. So okay, that that's a good point. Let me let me do this. Is this what you did? Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at these things and see what differences uh, they create in the output. Right. So this is the date of birth. So somebody born in 2004, when compared to uh, last week, 2020, is 16.068, 16 or 16. So what this is doing is this is the actual age. Age one just gives you the raw number. It does not round it up or reduce it in any, any way. It just gives you the whole number with decimals, which is what that is. In age one, we wrote a round function. That round function, you need to tell that round function what it needs to round up to. You can round up numbers to 10. You can round up numbers to 0 0.01, if that's what you want to round up to. You can even round numbers up to 10 years, right? If you round up to 10, then everybody will be age 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50. But if you want to round them up to an integer, you can just do 1.0 or just 1. When you do that, you'll see that 16.06 gets rounded to 16. 41.95 gets rounded to 42. Right. That's what I did. Yeah. So, but you might not, so while this is acceptable, you might not want somebody that's 41.95 years to be called 42 until right. 42nd birthday. Right. In that case, you want to use the INT function, but the INT function does not need another parameter, just like the round function does. The round function okay. I'm thinking that may have what threw my INT function off was when I did that. Right. Okay. So the round function needs to know what to round up to, right? You want to round up to the closest one or the closest 0 0.1 or the closest 10 or some number like that. The INT function is just going to give you the integer part of this number without rounding up anything. So 41.95, the integer part of that is just 41. Okay, I'm going to just rewind, I'm going to rerun it while I'm on the call. Okay. Right. So, so you can do age any number of ways in SAS, and we just have to decide what is right when you are working on it. Does that help clarify, Derek? Is there anything else you want me to do? I think that solved it. Okay. Because this was all recorded, I'm, I'm happy that this is all going to be on video, but I'm going to go ahead and not save this for now because it does not, uh, it goes a little beyond what we needed to do for that exercise. All right, those are some great questions. Uh, I love that we were able to talk about order with the output statement. We were, we were able to talk about um, decimal places and the INT function as well. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, I, I'm not hearing anything. I, I think this has been a, this has been a good day. Um, I hope the classes have been helpful. Please give me feedback. Um, I've been responding to questions and comments on Twitter as well. Uh, and that's where other people can also see if you've been uh, posting something. So please continue to engage with that. Uh, if not, I will see you guys next Friday. And on Monday, I will uh, send you another email about week three's videos. Bye. Bye, Bye Sujit. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thanks, Sujit.